You're not confident because it's your choice. You're choosing to not be confident because instead of doing something about it, you just wish that you were and you sit back and complain about yourself. Saying to yourself, I wish I was confident in my body. I wish I was confident enough to say no. I wish I was confident enough to ask for his number. I wish I was confident enough to leave this relationship. You're giving yourself the message that you have no control over it. That it's something that you should just accept and that it's fixed. Here's what you got to realize. You don't do things because you're confident. You become confident by doing things. Let me ask you, why should you be confident? You treat your body like shit. You don't care about what you eat. You don't care about having a good sleep schedule. You party and you go on social media and you watch TV in your free time instead of nurturing or developing new skills. You're neglecting your most basic needs. You're literally treating yourself like garbage. And then you wonder why you're not confident. No wonder why you don't feel powerful and confident in who you are because look at how you treat yourself. You don't even treat yourself like you deserve to feel confident. That's why I say that you deserve to feel insecure because you're not even taking the actions to make you feel otherwise. You don't just sit back and wish you were confident to do things. You take the actions that make you feel empowered. Let me give you a rule of thumb here that will empower you. Whatever you're not changing, you're choosing. So if you don't change the fact that you want to be confident, you're choosing to stay insecure. If you're taking all of this personal and you feel defensive, I promise I'm not here to attack you. I am here to help you. I want to help you wake up and realize that you are already confident within you. You just have to believe that about yourself. So if you actually want to change and start taking action right now to feel confident, I'm going to tell you how in this video. Hi, my name is Bianca. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're a subscriber, I love you so much. I'm so grateful for you because you're here from the start. And I know this channel is just growing and growing and you've been here from the beginning. So you're the OG and I love that about you. So you might be wondering, what should you do to become confident? I'm going to give you an analogy here. If you don't know me, I'm a professional soccer player. I'm a professional athlete. And why do athletes in general, why do we look so confident? It's because we show up every day. We train every day. We practice every day. We do the hard work every single day to build evidence that we are exactly where we belong. We're disciplined with our sleep schedule, with eating well, with working out. We don't listen to our feelings. We don't listen to our insecurities. We don't listen to our self doubt. We just keep the belief that if we put in the work and we stay disciplined, we will be where we want to be. And then we build the trust within ourselves because we see ourselves put in the work every single day. That's how you build evidence and that's how you build confidence. You will become confident once you start building evidence for yourself that you are working towards where you want to go. When you put in the work that align with what you want. Now you might be wondering, what should you be disciplined about? Well, what do you want? What are you insecure about? What are you trying to fix? If you're insecure about your body, well, maybe you want to be fit. So what do you have to do? You start working out and you start eating healthy. Or let's say you feel insecure because you don't feel smart and you have no skills. Well, you start educating yourself by reading books and building new skills and practicing different things. It's not rocket science. Whatever you want, whatever you're insecure about and you want to change, focus on getting better at that and be disciplined fixing that. But don't fall into a trap here because let's say you figure out you're insecure about your body, but you're an athlete. And I'm gonna give a very common example in the athletic world. The solution is not necessarily, oh, I'll just start dieting and that's how I'm gonna love my body. You have to dig deeper because maybe the more you take some time and reflect about how you feel insecure, you realize, well, I just feel insecure because I keep comparing myself to these models or to people that don't even have the same lifestyle as I do. They don't even need their body the way that I need my body. And then you realize how irrational it is for you to even have that insecurity. And maybe you start realizing that it's all subjective and that there's no perfect body and it's all based on trends and that there are tons of people out there that will love or not love your body regardless of what you do. But anyways, that doesn't even matter because the only opinion that matters is yours. All you need is your own approval and you start thinking about your own body and how it serves you and how muscles are super important because it's literally the organ of longevity. It's the most important organ of your body because that's what increases your lifespan. And then you start being grateful for the body that you have and then you cure your body insecurities. And then to start increasing your self love and loving your body, you'll start reading books and educate yourself about how other people 
overcame that and maybe you'll start buying lingerie maybe you'll start doing some self-compassion maybe you'll start giving yourself some affirmation in front of the mirror you'll try different things and then that's how you self-improve and that will build confidence you literally will 10x your confidence just by putting intentional thoughts and analyzing why you're not confident in the first place because you'll realize that it's probably extremely illogical the reason why you're not confident it's literally all made up it's literally this false narrative that you have in your mind that you're holding on to because it's easier for you to stay comfortable and keep that self-identity than to change and make progress for yourself but at the end of the day you want a better life for yourself you want to be confident you want to have the assurance that you can have a successful life and that starts by believing in yourself and you can't do that if you hold on to those past beliefs about yourself <sighs> okay i need to calm down here maybe you have this deep realization that whatever those insecurities are about yourself are extremely illogical and that you're ready to let those go but you still have something inside of you that is very insecure and it's because you don't know what you want out of life. Maybe you already are pretty healthy and you work out and you have a decent sleep schedule and you don't really party too much and you feel pretty good about that. But then there's something inside of you that is really bugging you because you have a hard time being disciplined since you don't know what you really want to pursue. You don't know what type of career you want. You want success in life, but you don't really know what you're meant for. So it's hard for you to be motivated, to be disciplined, to do something when you don't even know what you want. I know how that feels like because I've been that person. I remember a couple years ago, I knew I wanted something better for myself, but I didn't know what I, that was exactly. But there is a process for you to figure out exactly what you want out of life and how to build a better version of yourself without actually knowing what career path you're going for. Okay, so we can all agree that right now you are facing a problem. And your problem is that you don't know what you want or you don't know what to pursue. So it's hard for you to be disciplined and motivated to do things. Well, what do you do when you're facing a problem? What do you think the best course of action is when you're facing a problem? Is it by indulging in distractions? Is it by partying every weekend? Is it by smoking? Is it by drinking alcohol? Is it by going on social media? Obviously, no, you need to tackle the problem firsthand. And if you want to make the most progress as fast as possible, we can go really extreme about it. My advice is that you go monk mode. Because remember, you don't do something because you're confident. You become confident by doing things. And now you're wondering what you should do. So let's focus on things that you should do that will increase your confidence. And once you become more confident, you will increase your self-belief and you will change your self-image about yourself and then you will attract success. And then you will be able to reach success because you will have assurance about who you are and what you deserve. So here are some non-negotiables in this monk mode. And here, I, I, there's so many ways to go monk mode. I literally will tell you just my way to go about it, but you can make it however you want. There's no written rules, but here's my advice. Don't eat any processed foods. Cut that shit out of your life. You don't need that extra sugar. You don't need that extra fatty food. Eat clean, whole foods. That's very simple. You will clear your mind, you will clear your soul, and you will give you the space to at least think properly. Because we know that sugar fogs your brain and your mental clarity. You don't want that shit. Next thing, exercise. Non-negotiable, you gotta work out. Also, have the same sleep schedule every single night. Go to the bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. And then the last one is meditate. Just spend some time, 30 minutes, five minutes, whatever you are comfortable to start with, just start meditating every single day. Those are the basic needs that you need to do in monk mode. Those are non-negotiables, you have to do that. And when I say exercise, obviously you need an off day, but your off day is also a recovery day where you can do yoga, you can go on a walk, like be smart about it. Like you're not supposed to go all out every single day and exercise. Don't twist my words. Don't make, make it sound stupid. It makes sense. You need to just get some, some movements every single day. You're not going to die from moving every single day. Then with your free time, because I get it. You have a, some things that you have to do every single day. Maybe you have to go to school. Maybe you have to go to work, whatever. Do those things normally. But with your free time, here's what you can't do. No partying, no alcohol, no drugs. You can see friends, but only the friends that elevate you. No toxic friends allowed. Personally, I would not see friends at all. I would just want to focus on myself. But if you're someone that really needs that escape, you can see that one friend that will make you think differently and elevate you and support you towards success. But don't go to anyone that's holding you back. And then the last one, no TV or social media, no video games, none of that. No screen, basically, unless it's an ebook. And what should you do instead in your free time? Journal, write down your thoughts, write down your progress, write down ideas, and reading. 
that's it. And the only media that you're allowed to consume is long form podcasts. Not anything short, not TikToks, not anything that stimulates you with a ton of different videos and all that. Only long form podcasts that you don't even need to look at. You can just listen. And they have to be educational. Don't listen to like true crime stuff. If you don't know where to start, just literally start listening to TED Talks. Those are amazing educational podcasts you could listen to. But if you want my advice about the podcast that changed my life, I will link it right there or whatever. I'm just going to put it up in the corner right here. So you're going monk mode because you want to create some structure for yourself and you want to do homework with the intention to figure out what you want to pursue in life. And by doing all of these things, you're going to figure out what skills you have, what strengths you have, what advantages you have, and what you can be good at to solve problems. Because for careers, for jobs, their goal is to solve a problem. If you have a problem with your electricity, you call an electrician because they know how to solve that problem. If you have a problem with your health, you go see a doctor because the doctor knows how to solve the problem. So any job in life is the ability to solve a certain problem. And you're trying to figure out what problem are you good at solving. And you're going to figure that out the more time you spend with yourself and understand yourself. That's why in your free time, what you want to do is consume books and journal because you want to reflect on what you're learning and how it applies to you and give you ideas. So any interest that you have, any you know yourself better than anyone else. You know what you're interested in. Start leading yourself where you're curious at and see if that's something that is useful for your future. And I know that you might be skeptical because you know yourself. You know that you start getting into this analysis paralysis where you overthink everything, you're overwhelmed, you feel like when you're thinking too hard, you're not amounting too much, you're not getting anywhere. It almost like keeps you stuck because you feel like you're making no progress. I know what that feels like because I've been that exact person. And I still feel that way when I start really wanting to solve a certain problem for myself. I go all in and I do all this effort and I feel like I'm not amounting to anything and I'm like, how am I even going to solve this? This feels like too much. But just trust that creativity comes from structure. You should not expect to find the solution to your problem by working intensely with it. While you're working intensely, all you're doing is planting the seed in your subconscious. And it's only when you let go, when you sit back, that the solution will come to you. But it cannot happen unless you've put the work to plant the seed. So just think of Thomas Edison or Albert Einstein when they discovered either the light bulb or a theory of relativity. When they figured out big moments or groundbreaking information, it was always when they were half asleep, daydreaming or taking a nap. It's when they're doing the most monotone activities that their ideas come to fruition. So that's what you have to think about yourself. You're literally just trying to plant things in your subconscious. So when you sit back and you're driving, you're going grocery shopping, you're showering, you're shaving, whatever you're doing that requires no mental focus, that's when your, your ideas will come to life. Where people get it wrong is they think that they will just sit back and get the answers just pop out of their head. But if you don't put active, forceful activities to try to solve the problem, you won't figure out the solution. So this is super important. That's why I'm saying you're going to make more progress if you go monk mode because you're going to put so much effort into trying to figure this out that your brain will have no choice to come to this solution because it will always be thinking about it. Even when you're not thinking, it's going to be working in the back of your mind. And that's good. That's exciting because once you figure that out, you're on a step closer to the dream life that you've always wanted to have. You become what you think about. So if you put thoughts in your mind about bettering yourself and improving yourself and finding your true potential, you will become that highest version of yourself. You got to trust that. Believe me, it's real. I'm actually going to put another video that I did about success. And that one is extremely helpful, like knowing the number one thing that you need to do to be successful. It's a non-negotiable as well. You have to figure that out. Actually, that's the one thing you should do before even this whole video, before even going into monk mode, you should watch this video right here. And then my last piece of advice is when you come out of monk mode, because you will have to come out, like it's impossible and it's not sustainable to stay in this rigid, structured, environment like real life happens so it's important that you come out of monk mode at some point like you don't want to just be just with yourself because that's not actually living you want to come out and test out your new skills and that can be scary because you're maybe you're thinking like yes i am more confident in myself and i feel better about myself but this is different like trying something new i don't really feel confident that it's gonna that's gonna work out this is where people make the biggest mistake because people think that you're confident 
when you're being perfect, which is not the case. You're only confident when you are comfortable with failure. That's why it's important that you go out in the real world and you test your new skills and see what works out because that will build your confidence knowing that failure is not actually a bad thing. It's just a lesson for you to get closer to what you want. But people have this misconception that if you're confident, it's because you do everything perfectly and when you try things, it just works out. But no, confidence is being comfortable with when things don't work out, that you're resilient and you keep going because eventually you will figure it out. Now, last thing, I promise, but last thing, you have to be patient with yourself. It's so hard because nowadays we live in the world where it's instant gratification. When Whenever you want something, you just order it online and you'll get it. You want food, you'll get it. You want clothes, you'll get it. You want a supply, you'll get it. You literally want sex, you can watch porn. You literally want weed, you just smoke it. Like, it, it's so easy to get anything nowadays. But the biggest dreams, what's actually the most rewarding, cannot be easy. If not, everyone would have it. That's why when things take time and you have to be patient, it's a good sign because Whatever is actually worth having and is actually rewarding will take time because that's what makes it so special. Every time you struggle because you don't feel like doing something, just remind yourself of athletes. Athletes do things even when they don't feel like it. But also remember that when you start working out, let's say when you don't feel like working out, it's always worse before you do it because while you do it, the adrenaline kicks in, the endorphins, the oxytocin, everything kind of comes in and then you feel so much better. So just know that when you feel shitty, it's just the normal process of starting anything. But once you're in it, it will get better. That's how motivation works. You don't do things because you're motivated. You get motivated by doing things and realizing you're on the right track. That's what releases dopamine. So just don't think about your feelings and just do the thing that you have to do. And then over time, you will build confidence because you are respecting yourself, you are respecting the actions that you need to do, you are building trust with yourself that you can get what you want because you see yourself taking the actions to get there. And honestly, to get you going, just keep the why in mind. What is your reason why you wanna do it? I literally do things because I know, like let's say I do YouTube because I know why I want to do YouTube. I have this big dream for myself. So that keeps me going from posting every day, that keeps me, keep learning and holding myself accountable because I am so connected to why I want to do it. So think of that about yourself. Literally with everything that you do. I don't want to vacuum. I don't want to clean my apartment. I don't want to do any of that. But I think about why I want to do it. Well, it's because I want to feel good after knowing I'm in a clean space. So I will do it. And then eventually that's delaying gratification. You end up enjoying yourself better in the future because you're doing the painful things right now. So just get to work. Trust yourself, trust the process, build confidence every single day. It's your choice because remember, whatever you're not changing, you're choosing. Now get after the life that you want. I believe in you, trust yourself. I love you so much and I will see you tomorrow in a new video. Mwah.